I um, think about a lot of things and then end up writing about them. Most of the things I write about tend to be around identity and especially the identity of the photographer and how it's reflected in the work they're making. Um, I have a specific focus in black photographers and queer photographers. All writing kind of blends into other forms of writing. I think um, when with the kind of writing I do, I mostly write for arts journals and arts magazines and those kind of things. So, um, a lot of artists will make work, but then it's kind of a lot of writers will then look at the work, reflect on it, and then um, muse on it, basically. I think the word musings is quite a good way of describing the kind of work I do. But I think that with photography, it's been in a relatively lucky split pace because the camera can be used anywhere. So if you're trapped in your house, you still have your equipment. Um, I know for a lot of painters or sculptors or performance artists, they couldn't get out. They were kind of trapped inside. And I think especially for black photographers and queer photographers who a lot of them are emerging or young or just starting out, it kind of, that's a lot easier to do. You don't have to um, get financed or um, get a fund funding to go to the other side of the world to make work. You can get a camera, any camera and make work. So I think it's a very accessible way in. And I think that really helps um, make photography so interesting because you're always having new people with new ideas. I think photography can be a lot like a diary and it can be a lot like a mirror in the sense that when it's restricted um, or you're forced to look at it for a long time, um, it can kind of just like feed off itself almost where, um, I think by definition, photography can't exist in a vacuum because it's always looking at something. Um, its limitations are also its um, best features because it allows you to kind of um, push further and interrogate things that you might see every day and not realize until you look at them through a camera lens. Photography exhibitions definitely haven't gone away and I think they're still very popular for, for a good reason. Um, but I also think that the other major benefit of photography is it works. It's a medium that when you see it in a photo book or you see it on a laptop screen, you're not looking at a reproduction of the artwork. You're seeing the artwork the exact same way you'd see it if it was on a wall or on your camera. So compare that to a painting or performance piece where you kind of have to be there to see it. Looking forward, I think there's a lot of black artists, a lot of queer artists who are um, graduating now or, they grad or they're in the still the early part of their career who are going to do insane stuff in the next five years because they now have the ability to, the platform to, and the experience to. Um, I think digital art especially is where I really am looking to um, research more and explore more. I think that when I look at what's going on and the kind of art I'm drawn to, I think there's a lot of really exciting stuff with video games, um, VR, AR, um, and that kind of stuff. I very much think that technology right now, we we haven't fully grasped it in a biological sense of how it's kind of becoming a part of our bodies. And I think that when VR, AR, um, whatever happens, when it becomes more normalized, when it becomes more, um, more like an iPhone in your pocket, I think we'll see it a lot less as a binary between us using a machine and the machine being used by us. Um, I think VR is still very much in its infancy, but I think that um, the the way it's going, the direction it's going, is going to be so prevalent in one way or another that it won't just be something we use, it'll be something that is part of us.